this is another long-term renter. He was really doing well, and then he fell off. And I sent him to the man leather. And I was going to call the police. And he paid most of his rent. But this is the condition that the car is in. This car was in mint condition when they went out. He had two flats. Uh, I don't know if he broke the window or because the car was parked on the side of the road since the 1st of August that someone trying to get into the car broke the window. That's kind of what I'm thinking kind of happened. And this car from a cosmetic standpoint has dents, broken window, um, and the windshield. The windshield has a huge crack in it. I made like $3,500 off of this rental. And I feel that I'm gonna have to spend $2,000 to get this car rental ready again. And as I was sitting here waiting on the tow truck driver because essentially he ran into a flat, he lost the keys, um, anything you can think of, I started to think, why does this keep happening? It is a pattern. The hero car, hero truck came by, the police came by, and I'm beginning to see a pattern. Like, give you an example. The young lady that I rented the Porsche to, she paid $130 for it. And she brought it back exactly like it went out. I am seeing that my customers with credit cards uh, who pay consistently, who I don't have these issues out of, I need to reward them and move away from the yard birds because this is the second yard bird person that was doing fine and he turned into a yard bird and essentially he's a lift driver and I know for a fact right now that lift drivers are making five to ten thousand dollars a month but the thing is you gotta drive and what I am seeing with the people who have these problems because there's a pattern have you noticed that all of the cars are filthy they're dirty these people have no manners about themselves they have no coof the cars are dirty the cars are not washed there's all types of stuff in the car i see this over and over and over again and this is telling me who this person is the girl that rented the porsche she actually washed it before she brought it back so there's a dent and once again, I'm, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. I'm beginning to understand because now that I'm tapped in with this social economic class, I mean, look at it. People are renting cars for a reason. They're renting cars for a reason. And, you know, I'm not going to go with my, my first decision was to get this thing fixed and trade it. That may or may not happen because it just depends on what's going on with it because he drove the hell out of this car it's 8,000 miles past its service and the service on this model is like 800 bucks and then like this is what I'm talking about look at how he was living look at how he was living there's junk there's trash and I don't know what he hit, but the sidewall of those tires are messed up. I don't know. And also, there's some other things that happened to this car. He ran over something, and the car sounds like a hot rod, which tells me that the exhaust is disconnected somewhere under the car. And this speaks to the carelessness because people who are financially reckless are reckless in every part of their life. Right now, I know Uber drivers, 
I personally know Uber drivers, I personally know Lyft drivers who are making four to five thousand dollars a month. Why couldn't this guy make money and pay his bills? Because of who he is as a person. And this is something that I'm starting to see. And this is one of the reasons that I launched the corporate papers the way that I did, because you got a lot of people who want to take it easy when they need to be grinding. They need to be grinding. And I guarantee you, this guy was like, look at, look, he's a sloppy person. He's a nasty person. He's a messy person. I guarantee you, he doesn't value time. And this is something else I've noticed that people who are late to pick up the car, these are people I have problems out of because they don't value time. Mickey, a multi-millionaire, actually broke his butt to have my car serviced. He actually got in it, drove it to Buckhead, got my car serviced because he values time. And poor people do not value time. They just don't. They don't value time. And this is why they're poor. They're not poor because the man and the system locked them out. They're poor because they're trifling. There's a reason that the X5 was trashed. There's a reason that the land, the Range Rover was trashed. There was a reason that these cars were trashed. Because I'm about to get a little deep tonight. I'm about to get really, really deep. Because I figured some stuff out. I have figured some stuff out and I figured out why this has continued to happen and why it's not going to happen in the future. Because I'm getting ready to make some substantial changes. You know, as a tow truck driver, how often you see things like this? Oh, for people renting? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, this is a, this is an everyday thing. So, uh, my customer rented this vehicle to um, uh, somebody, customer, and he left it on the side of the road with damages. Uh, somebody broke in the, the window on the side. He didn't call the customer, but this is an everyday thing. When you rent vehicles to somebody, expect this to get, to happen. You're taking a chance on loaning your vehicle that you pay hard earned money for to help somebody else out and this is how they repay you. But I see it on a daily basis. So um, when you run out, make sure you have insurance coverage from them. They have them coverage. To, so if the car is damaged, you charge their insurance company for it to let them pay it. And then it won't come out of your pocket. But this is everyday thing. For tires to be flat on the highway, I risk my life to try to bring this vehicle off the highway. And then you have people uh, put stickers on it or come and try to steal something that's in the vehicle. If you go to the other side, there's a broken window on there. But this gentleman right here, out of the kindness of his heart, let somebody borrow his vehicle, rent it to him, and it comes back in this condition. And it's like a, it's a unfortunate, it's a sad situation that you all have to deal with this on a regular. So just be careful who you rent to. That's all. This is an everyday thing. Uh, this message is for everyone who is waiting to get into the corporate papers. If you're waiting to get into the corporate papers until the price goes up, you're just demonstrating a bunch of attributes that I'm going to talk about and the chances of you being successful are slim to none. I'm, I'm about to get real. I'm about to really talk to y'all on a different level because I was figuring out what was happening. Because it keeps happening. They keep the car. They don't pay. They trash the car. And it's deliberate. On a subconscious level, they despise the fact that I can provide them these nice cars and they can't afford it. So they tear it up. They become demo people. Get in the corporate papers today. Stop playing around. Stop dancing around. Stop waiting. We're going to have a serious training this Sunday at 5 p.m. You need to be in the corporate papers before 4 30 because I get people who come in at the last minute and they start sending me all these emails because you don't value time. I'm about to have a real serious conversation with you guys. Get in the corporate papers now. There's coursework 
that you need to be working on now. And Sunday, we're going to be talking about establishing holding companies, establishing oper LLCs. I got people who were in the corporate papers in the corporate toolbox who haven't set up their LLCs yet. What are you waiting on? Christmas? All right. Go below. Get in now. Stop waiting around. Stop playing because you're de demonstrating yard bird behavior. These people are intentionally because I'm just like, you know, I'm a social scientist on some level and I'm just like, why are they tearing up these cars? I drove for Uber for six weeks. You know, I had to do an extra oil change. That's all that happened. I did not mess up any mirrors. I did not have any accidents. And I began to understand what was happening. I've got clients who pay me like I got cars on hire car for over a hundred bucks. People rent them and they bring them back in the condition that they rent them in. You want to know why? When you have to pay, it commands your attention. And one mistake that I made, I rented those Acras too cheap. That was a big mistake. This is why I had my first issue with this chick. And you know what she asked me? She's like, could I make it $30 a day? And I'm like, you already ain't paying me. Now you want me to take less? Here's the thing. And some of y'all are not going to be happy. You are poor because you don't value time. Let me tell you what happened to me today. I ran out of car, a new car that I bought, and there was something wrong with the key. And I thought it was just an issue with opening and closing the car. And the guy calls me and says, the car won't start. And I knew it was the key. I knew it was the key. You know what happened? Within 15 minutes, I was where he was and I switched him out to, and I upgraded him. I gave him the 740 because he's a good paying customer. I broke my ass to get him another car as fast as possible. That's how you fucking do business. None of none of this shit. I'll get around to it when I get around to it. You're demonstrating yard bird fucking behavior being that way. And you're never going to be anyone. You ain't going to never have shit. And you're going to waste your fucking life. And dude was like, he's like, he, he said, man, you different. It's like he had another car in 20 minutes. Then I took that car, had another key made. I did not wait until later. I called up my key guy and said, hey, can you come? I got an emergency. He came. He got me another key. We're good. I value time. You got to value time. You got to stop pissing around, playing fucking games and wasting your fucking time because you're demonstrating yard bird fucking behavior and you ain't gonna never have shit. You ain't gonna never be shit. I'm serious. I'm talking to you like this for a reason. I want you to be successful, but like I know for a fact that Uber drivers are making six to $10,000 a month. This guy was a Lyft driver and he was struggling. But once I saw how he treated the car and I saw who he was as a person, it made sense. The X5 was trash. These people don't have no money. They don't have any money because they don't value time. She was late. Player Player was late. This dude was late. This is where I have most of my issues. The lady that rented the Porsche, she was early. The family that rented the BMW, they were early. People who value time value making money. It's a simple concept. And like my customer, he was like thrilled. He was like, man, I get this. I was like, yeah, you know, and uh, I'm going to get this back, but you can have this for a day or two while I get this sorted out. This is how you do business. This is how you get people to come back and give you money over and over and over again. Not waiting until you feel like being a business person. This is why a lot of you will never ever be successful because you are a yard bird in your little heart of hearts. Instead of actually, like, like I said, one of the reasons I did the corporate papers totally different this time was I wanted to get a better caliber of customer. I'm giving you game 
that you can't get nowhere else. No one else is talking about holding companies. No one else will teach you about corporate banking, corporate credit, how to start a business, how to brand your company, how to hire people. No one else is teaching you this and you're fucking wasting your fucking time and you're playing around instead of being on this shit like Mickey. I called up Mickey. I said, they didn't know how to put the GPS kill switches in. He said, give me five minutes. I go there to pick up the car because I had someone to rent it and he had taken it to Buckhead. He had personally got in the car, drove it to Buckhead, do put the GPS switch in in 30 minutes. This is how you be successful, taking action, not sitting around, not waiting till you feel like it. You know, uh, when this dude called me, I was heading to go have a nice little lunch and I was gonna go look at another car. And once he called me, I was like, all that changed and I was like, I got a customer who has a problem, I need to solve my customer's problem. And this is why I am fucking successful. I'm not successful because I'm the smartest person in the room. I'm not successful because I'm brilliant. I am successful because I understand fundamental elements of business. Like for the people who are gonna get in the car rental course, you're going to get some game that you will not get from the chick in California or any of these other Toro people. You want to know why they have never built a business. They've never built a business from scratch. I have built GC solutions the upscale garage sale and this YouTube business all from scratch. And I've got repeat customers with each business. You want to know why? Cause I understand how to treat people, how to treat customers. And a lot of these clowns and these people, they're on Toro or hire car. And they like, dude told me, he's like, man, you're the best person I've ever rented a car from on hire car. Your cars have a full tank of gas. They're clean. And you actually answer the phone and handle problems when they occur. This shouldn't be abnormal. This should be normal across the land. But it ain't because most folks are yard birds. They're listening. I'm going to throw my piece of shit car on hire car and make this passive income a car that barely runs. You ain't changed the oil. You didn't wash it. You didn't put a full tank of gas in it. And then you're wondering, I've had people take back cars they had from other people and come back and get my cars. You think that's an accident? It's how I run my business. And a lot of y'all are not about business. A lot of y'all are like this yard bird. He wasn't about his business. If he had got up and drove for a lift every day, whether he felt like it or not, he would have had the money to pay me. He wouldn't have been poor. He wouldn't have been broke. But because he's a yard bird, because he's a sloppy, reckless, careless person, he will never have shit in life. Never. While I got multi-millionaires breaking their ass to earn my business. You, you see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? You got to start valuing time. And I know a lot of y'all are going to wait until the price goes up and jump in the corporate toolbox, the corporate papers and be emailing me all this other stuff. And this is, this is something I see a lot of people that I'm not going to rent to will call me over and over and over. They will not leave a message. You want to know why they ain't doing shit. They don't feel that I'm doing shit. And I'm like, literally I would sit there and watch my phone and they would call me five or six times versus sending me a text and leave me a message. This is low impulse control behavior. And whenever someone does that, and they try to rent a car. I was like, oh, you called? I recognize the number? Reject. Because you ain't going to be nothing but problems. Like I said, you know, this has been an interesting three months. I've learned a lot. And now I'm starting to go back into my social scientist mode because I'm like, I, I, like the dude left the car on the side of the road on the first. And I actually saw it. And I was like, that looks like my car. It looks like one of my cars. And I just kept driving. And he finally got around to sending me a message today telling me where the car was. The car was there on the first, the second, the third, 
the fourth. It took him three days to tell me where my car was. No sense of urgency, no sense of priority. And I guarantee you, if you keep demonstrating attributes like that and behavior like that, you're not going to have a good life. You're going to be an old person eating fucking Alpo. I'm just giving you the real because everyone that I know that is successful values time. When they say we're going to meet for lunch, they show up on time or they show up early. I never have to sit around and wait for my friends to show up. They're either going to get there early or right on time because they value time. And if you want to be a successful person, you need to value time. You need to get a sense of urgency under your belt. Like one of the reasons that I don't do corporate paper stuff is like, I have to be available for my customers. See, here's something that you guys need to understand. If you want people to give money to you, you need to make it easy for them to give money to you. If they got to wait until you feel like it, or they got to wait until you feel comfortable, you're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of money. So you need to start valuing time. You need to light a fire under your ass and start executing like your life depended upon it. This month, I'm going to do $30,000 for my rental car business. My fourth month. I've watched countless YouTube videos where it took people three and four years to get here. Three and four years. It took me four months. It's the fourth. I've already made $4,000. And once again, I'm in the marketplace. And many of you, and I'm not saying y'all are bad people. Of like, man, I ain't going to do that. That's too much work. Wrong way to look at it. I am showing you 100% transparency, step by step, what you need to do to create a successful business. And it ain't this bullshit, all of these fucked up, big bitch ass YouTubers are telling you. It's easy, it's simple, you don't have to work that hard. Fuck that noise. You gotta work your ass off to be successful. And if anyone tells you different, they're fucking consciously lying to you to get your views. And they don't give a fuck about you. They really don't. They, all they care about is their own selfish ass motives. I'm here giving you the real. And a lot of you, because you watch all of these fake ass, unsuccessful in real life YouTubers, they're successful from a social media standpoint. Me, oh, excuse me. Me, Kevin tried to start a business. It failed in one year. He put it on his channel. I give him props for, you know, being transparent, but he could not run a business outside of YouTube. Hello. And this is somebody that people are taking all this advice from. He cannot. And there's a guy flip anything USA who's critiqued him. And he says, meet Kevin and Graham Stephan are not good real estate investors. And I agree hundred percent with him. You have to buy cheaply. You have to buy correctly to sell and make a profit. So, you know, yeah, a lot of y'all like, Hey, you, you talking about all these YouTubers. I'm talking about these fake ass lying YouTubers who are filling your heads with useless information and bullshit. That's what they're doing. They're filling your heads with bullshit. You cannot go out and apply this information. It sounds good. So you watch and you consume and you give them a big fat YouTube check. They ain't like me. I can build a real business. In 24 months, my car rental business will be a seven figure business in 24 months or less. They ain't, they ain't, most of these YouTubers can't do that. You know why? Because they never ran a real business. They don't know anything about the importance of customer service. They don't know the importance about branding. They don't know the importance of hiring. They don't know, they don't know shit. But y'all listen to them because they look good and they sound good. And they blow smoke up your ass. And once again, I put it on like, how many YouTubers have helped you become successful? And uh, last time I asked that, a lot of people said JT Hustles Automation, whatever his name is. And it was the same thing. It was the same thing. 
it was the same thing. It's appliance repair, appliance repair, appliance repair. No one actually went outside of that. No one. Raised the entrepreneur. Hey, let's go for the free 99. Let's do this. It is entrepreneur interfuckingtainment. I am giving you real business lessons, and a lot of y'all, our minds are blown because that shit's hard. It's like, I've had many people, it's like, man, you're a millionaire. Why are you working so hard? You know, millionaires work on the weekends. I got friends who are way richer than I am. And I will call them up and like, hey, uh, I'm going into the office on the Saturday. They rich. They got M's in the bank for real. And they still fucking working. While your lazy ass think you're going to get one of these simple YouTube hacks and you're going to make all this money and sit on your ass and rub on Big Booty Betty's ass. You're delusional. Wake the fuck up. Because now I'm really fired up because I figured out why this keeps happening. And it's not going to happen anymore because I'm raising my prices. Like today, I call my rep. I got a car for 110. I got a car for 90. I got the car uh, that I gave my customer. I lowered it for 55 to match the price of the car he was renting. And once he comes out of that, then I'm going to raise it up to $99. And if it don't run out on hire car, it don't run out on hire car because it's going to run out on Turo. I really don't care because I've learned my lesson. You cannot put these nice, beautiful, shiny things in the hands of yard birds. They, their subconscious contempt will make them mess it up because I'm sitting there like, how hard is it to, put the key in and drive the car. How hard is that? And they're subconsciously despising the fact that I can not buy one car, but buy multiple nice cars and let them rent them. They actually hate me on a subconscious level. And this is why this shit kept happening. And when I figured it out, I was like, oh, this guy, you know, he was calling me, he was calling me. It's like, he wanted me to fix the windshield. And I was like, um, what happened to the windshield? Cause you know, I ask, I speak to people like adults. I was like, what happened to the windshield? And I got another car, the diesel, which requires that you have to put DTE in there. So I'm going to be very careful who I rent that car out to. I'm probably going to rent it out to a man. I'm not going to rent this out to a woman because you need to put the DTE fluid in, uh, every, t you know, fill up four times and then put the DTE fluid in. And I'm gonna have to explain that to somebody because if you don't concept that, if you're looking at me like with bad in your eyes, or I'm like, I'm not renting that car to you. I'm gonna rent that car to someone who's gonna be careful with it. I'm gonna rent that car to someone who's gonna take care of it. I'm not gonna rent it to anybody because it has special requirements, but it's a good car. And it's a diesel engine. If you know anything about diesels, they last forever. They last forever. So I figured it out, man. I was like, why does this keep happening? They keep the car, they don't pay me, and they destroy the car. And I had the tow truck driver in there because y'all think it's just me. He told me that their tow yard is full of cars from Enterprise, Hertz, and Avis. He said they go through it all the time. And many of you are like, well, it's your name that's drawing these people to you. No, it ain't. So hopefully you weren't offended by my tone because I want you to be successful. And if I have to slap your ass into a coma to get you to take action, I'll do that because time is wasting. This Sunday, we're going to get into holding companies. And I'm going to tell you next week, several people in the corporate papers will have their first holding company. And they're going to have their first operating company next week. And if you want the training, you want to be there, you want to do this, sign up now. Don't wait until the price goes up because uh, this is how I've had these 40 and 50 and $60,000 days because people wait to the last minute. Stop being last minute Larry. You got to change that. Stop waiting until, you know, it's the expiration date. Stop waiting. Start taking action. Just like that dude who called me and said the vehicle won't start. And I knew it was the key because the key wouldn't open the car. I was like, damn, I got to get me a new key. 
and I took action, I served my customer, and that's why I'm richer than you. And if that makes me a conceited motherfucker for saying that, I don't give a fuck. I am richer than you because I understand how to make money and you don't make money sitting on your ass, hoping, wishing, and trying to secure the bag. You make money by serving people appropriately and properly. And this guy who's a customer, he's going to be a customer for a long time because he like, dang, he got that power. He, he hooked me up. He hooked me up. Because see, I know he's a long-term renter and he's going to pay me. And I have to treat those people special because they're special in a sea of yard birds. See, that's how you run the fucking business. None of this, you don't have to do no customer service. You don't have to build a list. You don't, that's bullshit. And y'all eating it up with a big spoon because you're lazy. Yeah, I said it. You're fucking lazy. And you need to stop being fucking lazy so you can become successful. And it's going to take you working your ass off in the beginning. At some point, it's going to ease up. But in the beginning, there ain't no work-life balance. You will be working your ass off. That's the facts. This is the reality. I have not had a day off in two and a half months. I'm a fucking millionaire and I'm out working your broke ass. Think about that. Think about that. I don't have to do this shit, but I want to do it because I see an, a beautiful, amazing future. Two years in the future, I'm going to have three or four employees. I'm going to have my hit squad. I'm going to have my hookups. I'm going to have my connections. And I'm just going to kind of show up here and there. And I'm going to have people do all this other stuff. And I'm going to be making seven figures a year from this business. That's why I'm doing it. Not because now, because right now it sucks. That sucks. But the future, the future is going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be able to pull seven figures a year after taxes out of this business. After taxes. My retirement's going to be so sweet. It's going to be so nice. It's going to be nice because I'm going to make it nice. But stop fucking waiting to get into the corporate papers. Get your ass in now. There's training that you need to do because the way I'm building it, if you go ahead and hop in at the end of the month, you're going to be weeks behind. And you're going to have to do a whole lot. And also calling me up and asking me a bunch of questions versus fucking doing the work, that shit ain't happening. This is why when people email me, I refer them to my assistant. Because she's been empowered to do certain things. She's been empowered to add you to courses. She's been empowered to do all kinds of things. Yesterday, she was doing some stuff on her own initiative, and I was very, very proud of her. She figured some stuff out, and she took action. She took action. So stop waiting because you're exhibiting yardbird behavior. Hop in the corporate papers now. Do the first lesson there's going to be a longer lesson come this Sunday and start building your corporate empire. We're going to do a lot of wonderful things. But yeah, once I figured that out, because I was like, this, 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 there's a theme here. And the vehicles are always trashed. They're always dirty. They're always dirty because these people are slobs. And I'm starting to look at how they ro roll up. And I'm looking at how they dress like the guy. I rented to the day. He was dressed decently. He had a little backpack and everything. He had a haircut. I'm looking at all this stuff because if you come at me, like I am seriously worried about this chick who rented the BMW the other day. I am worried about her because she had on this flimsy little dress. She was tatted from the knee to the neck. And I'm just sitting here like, and tomorrow we may, the hit squad may have to roll out again because I got, I got some stuff brewing. And I'm just going to turn the car off and go get it. And I even worry about it because I got people waiting for these BMWs. So you want to, you don't want to pay? No problem. Turn it off. Go get my car. Rent it out to someone else. That's how we're going to do that. So hopefully you guys learn something. And for those of you who embrace this, you're going to be successful. For those of you who are pissed off because I called your punk ass out, you're going to be unsuccessful. You ain't going to have shit. You ain't going to never do shit. That's from me to you. And I'm telling you the truth 
because I got love for you and I want you to be successful and you're not going to be successful consuming all this bullshit content on YouTube. It ain't going to happen. It's not. That's all I got for you. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Corporate papers link is below. Get in now.